This is a video of how to paint Age of Sigma Bone Reapers Mortic Guard or any Bone Reapers actually. Hello, this is 60 Goblins in One Brush with a video of how to paint Ossiac Bone Reapers, especially Mortic Guard. We use the Mortic Guard as an example because it's always good to... This is our main battle line unit and it's a very good battle line unit. You probably don't get around using it and so there will be another video this will be another video painting it as quickly and easily as possible the nice thing about the Ossiac Bone Reapers is there is a way or there are several ways to paint them really easily and quickly and they still look very cool it's very few armies you can do that huh? doesn't really matter it's it's all the same principle There are several possibilities you can use as a base. You can just paint the base black or sand colored or you can use astrogranite debris or you can use Martian earth or Armageddon dunes or any other sand texture or for larger models. I don't do this for the small models on the for the larger models. You can use the Green Stuff World textured rolls. Watch my video, the description is below. And this is the Egyptian textured roll. The larger the model, the better it looks. Yeah. So you need Green Stuff for this. And uh, one of these textured rolls and water. And I use the Egyptian roll, but there's a Necron roll as well, and all kinds of runes and Eldar and so on. Quite nice. So you need to start spraying your models in Wraithbone. It's very important to use Wraithbone, not white. And if you pay if you play Petrifix Elite, you can also use Gracier. Then you need the color Wraithbone. Then you need Skeleton Horde. And that after that it will already look great. Then for the armor and the shields, there's this blue part, yeah. Therefore, you need ultramarines blue contrast color. Also possible is Shaish purple if you want more the purple style, or Leviathan blue. Talasa blue is too light. Don't use it. Although you can mix in a little bit if you want it a little bit brighter or lighter. Then for the cloth and the flag, you need either Pterodon Turquoise or Achillean Green. If you use the spear type, which I prefer because there's a longer range, you need Blood Angels Red or Flesh Terrors Red. There are these little diamonds they have there on the chest, sometimes on the helmet and on the shield and sometimes on the weapons and so on. You need Hex Wraith Flame for that or Warp Lightning, like here. Okay. This, for example, here up here, this is the, on the rim of the shield. This is the difference of if you use Gracier or Wraithbone. Everything is Wraithbone except the rim up here that's Gracier. Then for the base, either black or sand color. Black you need anyway for the rim. And then Astrogranite Debris or Martian Earth or Armageddon Dunes or Mordant Earth. The crackle paint. I like it very much, this crackle effect. And I paint, except for the Martian Earth, I paint the bases with Sons of Horus green or any other green first. So if it shows through a little bit, there's a greenish radiation coming from the ground. It looks quite nice. So we start. First, spray the models in Wraithbone. I use the spear model now to show because then you can see how to paint the spear as well. It's a very good idea of Games Workshop to paint the spear in another color. 
And for the blade, there are three possibilities. I will show you all three. Okay, first of all, we have a look after it's sprayed if there are any gray areas that we need to touch up with Wraithbone or if it looks fine. Then we use Skeleton Horde and paint the whole model in Skeleton Horde, except if you can avoid it, the blade, the spear shaft, the parts here on the shield, and on the armor and shoulder pads that will be blue. But if you paint on this, it doesn't matter. It's not so important. Also, the cloth you can try to avoid, but it's not really essential. The easy thing is to paint everything in, uh, with Skeleton Horde. Okay, don't forget the butt of the spear, then the top part here, then under the shoulder pads, the top of the shoulder pads, the inside of the shield. Uh, my take on the Osiak Bone Reaper is that they are constructs where everything is made of bone. There's no metal parts, it's all magically animated bone. So while the skeleton horde is drying, it's a contrast color, takes a while, I use Sons of Horus Green and paint the base already. Next, I use Terradon Turquoise for the loin cloth. Yeah. Hmm. Terradon Turquoise is a perfect death paint. Makes your life so much easier. Also, when you paint in a gush or any larger Death Hero or the Magicians of the Osiak Bone Reapers. It's so easy. It looks great and it's super easy. The other thing I like to do, the tip of the spear you can paint in metal color or you can just paint it bone color, just use Skeleton Horde, then it's bone. Why not? Or what I like to use also the same color here. Uh, will look great. It's a magical construct. You can do whatever you like. That's how it looks when you paint the spear bone colored. That's how it looks if you paint it in some kind of death glass, what is called the sand, I always forget, the grave sand, or what's it called, the special substance of Shaish. <clears throat> That's how it looks in metal color. It's okay because we used it, that swords are metal colored, but in this case I don't care for it. I think it's better to use bone or magical material. Okay, now everything is dry here, and we use the ultramarines blue for the shield, and for the chest and shoulder armor. Use a very thin brush for this, because it's easy to mess it up. You can clean it up later, of course, but use a thin brush and don't load it up too much because you don't want it to drip or pool anywhere. If it's too dark for you, mix in a little bit of Talassa blue or a little bit of contrast medium. Okay, that's actually not so difficult. With a thin brush, it's very easy and looks very good afterwards. Because as a contrast color, it will be it will leave the rims a little bit lighter, so you don't really have to highlight them later. And leave the gem in the middle here. You see this part in the middle. Leave it. Don't paint it blue. And also the rims all around. It's actually quite easy to see the difference between the bony parts and the blue parts. Okay. Now we let this dry, and then we paint the shaft of the spear in red. I like to use Blood Angels red, but you can use Flesh Terrors red as well, it's a bit darker. The consistency of the Flesh Terrors red is very thick, so if you don't thin it down with Lamian Medium it will look very dark and you will have no texture left on your spear haft, but it looks very good. Blood Angels red, it looks like this, a little bit lighter. To compare 
Yeah. So as you can see, we're almost done. Next step is astrogranite debris. Where is it? Astrogranite debris. This is a color that becomes dry very quickly and it's very difficult to use then. If it's dry, mix in some contrast medium or medium or some ashen gray or mechanical standard gray. The medium, you can just buy a big bottle of medium by any kind of artist's company or Vallejo and so on. It's much cheaper than, than to buy these small bottles. Like this is six euros or so and, and 24 milliliters. And this is 250 milliliters. It's more than 10 times as much and it costs about 10 euros. So if you use a lot of medium and if you paint, you will use a lot of medium sooner or later. I would recommend to look for alternatives. But buy a matte medium, not a glossy medium, unless you want the gloss effect. Otherwise, if you do buy a miniature paint, I very much like the Green Stuff World Master Medium. It's also very nice. And anything is cheaper than Citadel. The colors of Citadel are unmatched, I think. They're the best. But medium is medium. By the way, you can almost revivify, resuscitate any color by pouring in some medium. Don't use water for that. Don't cover the base 100% so that the green still shows through a little bit. And try not to paint the feet. It doesn't matter if you do paint the feet gray a little bit because we will be able to fix it. Okay, now what's left? Now it's time for the gem here in the middle, the eyes and the runes here on the shield with Hex Wraith Flame or Warpstone Glow. Sorry, Warpstone Lightning. Very nice is also a 50-50 mixture of Hex Wraith Flame and Warpstone Lightning. This step is not necessary, but it's so easy and makes such a big difference that you should do it. Wait. Yeah, somehow my camera is not working so well today. Um, we'll show you some pictures later. But the eyes, for example, that's such a big difference. The eyes and the gem alone, it's great if they are in this bright light green. The only two steps that are left are touching up the wraith bone on the parts where you painted it blue or red or gray or green by mistake and then to paint the rim in black. Okay, I had to touch up the feet and here the shield. This thing in the middle is usually has a little bit of blue around. So this is easily done. Now the rim. This last step of painting the rim black is something I neglected for many years. But it makes such a big difference. It looks so neat and makes the whole appearance stand out much more clearly. Okay, that's it. Let's look at some pictures. And as I said, if you want some more variety, you can paint the rim of the shield up here in grace here and then use a mixture of nylon oil and skeleton hoard to shade it. And if you have a helmet like this on the Hecatos, also on the top there's a part that you paint in light green. And for the flag, for the standard, I recommend here this part after you paint it in, in green, you touch it up with Wraithbone in the middle part and the runes here on the sides with hex wraith flame also the gem up here okay that's it for today unless there's any more news coming thank you for watching thank you for subscribing hit the bell button and see you very soon